Hi, I'm Christy Dye with CertiPort. Today I'd like to show you how to register your students to take exams online via our CertiPort Exams from Home on demand testing engine. Now, this is great for students who are virtual or for students who are in your classroom and you want to test them online. So the first thing you're going to want to do is go to certiport.com and log in. And underneath where it says welcome and your name, you're going to want to select Proctor. And when you do, it will take you to this page. Now, if for some reason you don't see the Proctor role in your pull down menu, you're welcome to reach out to your territory manager or to our onboarding team and they can help you get associated with your high school or college and also make sure that you've accepted those proctor rights so that you can have rights to be able to create and manage exam sessions. So once you do see that proctor role, you're going to go ahead and select create and manage exam sessions. From here, you will see the first thing you're going to want to do is name your session. And then down here below, you'll also see sessions that I've already created. So for this session, maybe I am going to do another Autodesk session. And you might decide that you want to name it something that you're going to remember, like maybe you're going to test your Autodesk and it's going to be your fourth period class. And maybe you're in second semester. And then go ahead and hit create. Now from here, you'll pull down and select your testing center. You won't see as many as I do because I'm associated with quite a few. And then you'll select your exam language. Now um, there is only one language per exam session created. So if you do have other languages that you, if you do have like a mixed class where part of them are Spanish and part of them are English, just simply create two exam sessions. Another thing to remember is, for example, if you're creating an exam session in Spanish, you need to make sure that the operating system on the computer that you will test those students, that that computer is entirely set up in Spanish also. So for this example, I'm going to go ahead and select English and I'm going to select my number of candidates that I'm going to be testing. Um, maybe today I'm going to test 13 students. And then I'll hit next. Now, this is where you're going to select which program and exam you're going to give. Now, I find it easier to filter by the exact program. So in this example, I mentioned before, I was going to give an Autodesk exam. And um, let's say I'm teaching Revit right now and I go and I see that there's two Revit exams. Um, since I'm in the US, we use Imperial. I'll go ahead and select Imperial and then it's going to take me to the page where I select the details for the time and date of the exam. Um, I'm going to select Mountain Time because that's where I'm located. And um, perhaps I want to give this exam today. I could select today. And you notice you can select them far in advance if you would like to. Um, I'm going to go back. I'm going to select today. And then I'm going to click on this clock to select my time. I'm going to, for this demonstration, select, um, let's say, 1.15. Maybe my class starts at 1 o'clock. And I need my students to have about 15 minutes to get in, get settled maybe even have them log into certiport.com, make sure they remember their username and password, and then be ready to click on my link as soon as I activate the link on the proctor side, which I'll show you in a minute. And then you hit submit. It's really as fast and easy as that. So um, the last thing you want to do is to click this send confirmation emails that will send emails to you with both your proctor information and instructions and your test candidate. But let's say that I forgot to click that. You simply just re-log into CertiPort, click on proctor, hit create and manage sessions. And then right here, you'll see the sessions that you've created. And as you can see over time, you may get a few sessions. So that's why naming them something specific that you'll remember becomes important. So now, um, 
when you get the emails, I'm going to go ahead and just show you what those emails look like and go ahead and read through them so you'll have all the information and then you can click on when it's time to proctor your students. You can go ahead and click on that proctor link. I'm going to click on it now just to show you, but as you know, I scheduled it for more than an hour in advance because that's what's required. So you'll get an error message and a warning why you're getting that error message is that our exams don't start until five minutes prior to the start time. But this is actually something for that's really helpful to know is that um, you know, I set that exam start time at 1.15, which means you can actually log in at 1.10 rather than 1.15 and just be there ready and waiting for your students to join. Now, one reason that that is important is because this is a virtual machine. You have 15 minutes to get your students in to the session and get it going and it times out on adding new students after 15 minutes. So if I scheduled my start time at 1.15, 1.30 would be the last student that I could have join. Now, if you've got a lot of students, you might consider scheduling them into different testing times. Maybe you'll have a group start at 1.15. Maybe you'll have a group start at 1.30. Um, as you're more used to the system and more used to testing, then you'll find that you can get more students proctored at one time. And so if you're new, you know, keep that low and maybe keep the start time staggered. Now, another thing that I want to show you is the email for your test candidates. Now, however you share your information with your students, whether it's um, something like Canvas, you can post this in there that they can click on it when you tell them it's time to start the exam. You notice there is a candidate access code. You don't need to worry about giving that to your students. Now, I know that this test can't start now, but I'm going to go ahead and click on it just to show you what your students will see. So remember that access code I was showing you here? The, all the students have to do on testing day is click access code. And then also there is a secure browser that needs to be downloaded that keeps our exams safe. While your students are testing, so um, I highly recommend prior to the day you're actually testing your students to actually just set up a testing event for one student and pretend like you're the student and go to one of your students' computers and make sure they have rights to actually download this file because you want to make sure that your school, if you don't have rights, that you're working with your technology staff to whitelist this file. So if you go ahead and click on download, it's going to go ahead and download here. Now, I'm not going to click on it because if I click on it, it will actually end our recording session because this is our browser security that um, does prevent screen recording. And so I'm not going to click on it now in this recording session, but in this example where I've asked you to run it beforehand and just make sure that everything works properly so that um, your school has whitelisted this and allowed this specific file to be temporarily installed while your students are testing, you would go ahead and right click and run that. And then if it doesn't run, then that's when you want to reach out and get that file whitelisted. But really with on-demand testing, that is all that you um, need to know. But if you would like to read more, you can go to certiport.com uh, to our EFH site, right? There's the URL. Um, or if you would like training, on a recorded webinar or live, we have our webinar site, which is certiport.com backslash webinar, and you can click on the live calendar to see record, to see live sessions, or you can go to some of our recorded sessions that are, sorry, these are alive that I was telling you about. These are the ones we have coming up for this week. And then this site 
the webinar site I was telling you about is where all the recorded ones are. And then one more thing that I want to show you before ending this recording. And that is if your students join the test. In advance of the five minutes, it just puts them in a waiting room lobby. So if you're one of those teachers who like to just make sure everything's perfect and ready, you can have your students join early. I just took a screenshot of this because it wouldn't let me screen capture it because of our exam security, but um, that's what it'll look like and it'll just count down until it's time for the students to launch the exam. And then if you need any help getting started, we have an amazing onboarding team that's standing by to answer any questions that you have at 888-222-7890 extension three. You can email them at customer services at certiport.com or if you need exam support, same phone number but option one. Thank you so much for taking time to watch this video and we look forward to working with you.